And joining me now is Greg Lukianov. He's a free speech advocate and First Amendment attorney. He's also the author of Unlearning Liberty, Campus Censorship, and the End of American Debate. Also with me, Ibrahim Cooper. He's the Communications Director at the Council on American Islamic Relations. Gentlemen, thank you both for your time. We greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having me. me. Uh, so, Greg, at this point, 2,000 signatures. Mariam Navid, the author of the petition, wrote or said to the uh, San Jose Mercury, people say he has the right to freedom of speech, and I agree with that. The problem is that when you bring him to the university, you pretty much are putting him into a privileged position. You're raising his voice. Your reaction to that, Greg? I think you can't understand this case without seeing the big picture. We've been following this, uh, the, the, what we call disinvitation season, for years. Mm -hmm. And that's the attempts by students and faculty members to get speakers they dislike, commencement and otherwise, mm -hmm. disinvited from campus to, uh, because of their views. Condoleezza and Rice at Rutgers, for example, we followed that story here. Yeah, absolutely. And the problem is it's get, it, get, it gets more intense every year. We are actually sliding down the slippery slope where it's become an awful hard to say anything interesting and still get invited to speak on a college campus. But is there, um, Ibrahim, a difference, though, here when um, you hear someone say we're sliding down a slippery slope, as Greg pointed out, when well, the petition, for example, points out some of the things that Bill Maher has said about Islam, one of the quotes they note, he said, dealing with Hamas is like dealing with a crazy woman who's trying to kill you. You can only hold her wrist so long before you have to slap her. He goes on yeah. to say, talk to women who've ever dated an Arab man. The results are not good. Yeah. Um, well, for, first of all, uh, he's wrong about uh, what he says Islam believes. Uh, we have issued statements on the so-called Islam and apostasy, refuting claims that Islam demands that uh, you be killed if you become an apostate and all that. Thing. You can go to our website, find those kinds of things. But the key issue here is honoring and endorsing views that are bigoted and hate-filled. When we challenged Hersey Alley at Brandeis University, it was because she was being honored by the university. She's spoken many times around the country uh, spewing anti-Muslim bigotry. We haven't said a thing. But when a university honors someone, that's when we feel we have the right to stand up and say, no, I don't want this person honored. I don't want their hate-filled views endorsed. And that's the same situation with Bill Maher. He is being honored with a keynote address at a commencement. That is a tacit endorsement of his hate-filled views by the university, and I think that uh, creates a situation which, in which anybody can stand up and say, no, that shouldn't happen. We're the first ones to defend freedom of expression, the First Amendment. When the hate uh, radio host Michael Savage was barred from England because of his views. We said, no, you shouldn't bar people from a country merely because of their views, even if they're hate-filled and bigoted. So we stand for the First Amendment, but we also believe that the First Amendment grants us the right to say, no, we don't want uh, these kind of hate-filled views endorsed and honored by an uh, institution of higher learning. And Greg, let me show you the numbers. American Attitudes Toward Muslims, a survey found recently at Zogby, 45% hold an unfavorable view of Muslims, while only 27% espouse a favorable view. Let's just look, for example, Greg, at the one quote um, from Bill Maher where he said, talk to a woman who's ever dated an Arab man, the results are not good. If you insert, talk to a woman who's ever dated a black man, the results are not good. Do you think that those would be defended I'm, and this is not about free speech it is about what Ibrahim pointed out that it is a privilege to get a university that is not a part of your constitutional rights my concern is that we're teaching a generation to think like censors. And whenever we have this debate, people fixate on the one speaker that they really dislike without mm -hmm. seeing the bigger picture. That essentially, if you, if you say something wrong, people fixate on it and they say you should not be invited to speak. Not just honored, not just speak at commencement, but speak at all. And, and what we're finding is that students are increasingly coming to believe that they should have freedom from speech mm -hmm. as opposed to freedom of but speech. That, but that's not our position. Our position is if Bill Maher was invited by a student group and he wanted to spew his, his anti-Muslim hate, well, maybe we'd tell people to go and hand out literature or something like that, but we wouldn't ask that it be canceled. But when he is being honored and endorsed by the university itself, that's when we uh, believe you have the right to say no, not in our name. Yeah. 
Meanwhile, universities are very careful about who they choose for commencement speakers. They're already very cautious, and it's getting ver harder and harder to find someone who offends no one. Well, I'll tell you this, Greg. When we were doing the uh, story on uh, Condoleezza Rice at Rutgers, uh, the professor who was behind that, and it turned out to be a successful push to keep her from speaking, his, and this is no diss at all to Governor Chris Christie or um, the boss, Bruce Springsteen, but rather than Condi Rice, he said, well, why not have Bruce Springsteen? Again, this is not apples to oranges, but when you look at the legacy of Condoleezza Rice um, and, and the professor saying, well, let's bring in Bruce Springsteen or Chris Christie, some might say um, you're looking at a, a taste of quality, or, or, or I don't want to get myself into too much here, but you understand but what I'm saying here. Also in this year, it, it was the head of the IMF, was, uh, there was a disinvitation push against okay. her, the Chancellor of Berkeley, there was a disinvitation, for, even um, uh, James Franco, there was a disinvitation yeah. push against him. And, and I mean, and what I'm saying is people always argue that there's a slippery slope, that when you start excluding speakers... Uh, their point of view, um, it, it, it leads to this uh, the, 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 this problem, but, and it's getting worse every but don't year. We, don't we have the right, the First Amendment right, to speak up and say, no, we don't want this person here? I, isn't that a form of censorship that you're, you're supposed to sit quietly while a, a, a bigot is invited and, and honored you and endorsed by the campus? We yeah. have the right to speak out as well. You absolutely have the right to protest a speaker. My concern is that students and faculty members go first to let's not have this person speak on campus, and that's intellectually so, unhealthy. So but that's not what we're saying. We're not saying don't have this that's person what students speak are saying. on campus. No, they're saying don't honor, don't endorse. If he came just on his own to speak on can campus, yeah, who cares? and that's not the case. It, 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 almost 50% of the 260 examples I'm talking about, they're just regular speeches that students yeah, are learning we're from examples today like about this. Bill Maher. But, but let me, yeah, and, and that is to the point. Bringing it back, Greg, I understand a broader conversation. You're absolutely right, but bringing it back to this specific petition mm -hmm. with these specific remarks here. Where do you stand on, on this case? And, and certainly you're right. This is a broader conversation right. to your point about, you know, being intellectually open. And because you disagree with what someone did or their stance, for example, um, Condoleezza Rice going back to the Rutgers, that does not mean the door should be closed. But with this specific example and some of mm -hmm. the quotes there and the concerns, do you believe there's ever a valid time to have this conversation of whether or not if someone is seen as a quote-unquote bigot, if they are needed at this commencement keynote address or perhaps the university should pass. Is there ever an appropriate time to pass? I mean, the fact that people so vehemently disagree with him is all the more reason to hear him out. And this is an art that I feel like is, a is actually being lost on our campuses, where we really should be te uh, teaching people to at least hear people out or, or what they're going to say before you try to get them kicked so, off campus. So if, if they invited uh, the dragon of the KKK so or Bill Maher is the grand dragon of the KKK I can't wait no, no, till Bill Maher hears I'm just that saying, so, so Bill Maher is if a we know that's not what he's saying if Greg, if I think we're saying that I, it can I, never yeah. be no, challenged I think Bill you know that's that. in a form of okay. extremism yeah. on its own well Greg yeah. I think let's be clear I think you know Ibrahim I know you know he's not saying that he's not saying that Bill Maher is the grand dragon he's simply and you can call me out on it then I took Bill Maher's quote where he said talk to a woman who's ever dated an Arab man and, and the results are not good. I said, insert black man, and would people have the same thing? And I'm certainly he, he's not... He's called uh, for racial profiling. I mean... It's just amazing in these debates, though, how yeah. quickly people, uh, speakers, are likened to Hitler and, and the Grand Dragon of the KKK. Well, that, it's, no, it's but he's using that, that as an example yeah. of somebody, would you endorse... Uh, having that person speak and say nothing about it if they were spewing uh, the kind of things, a KKK or a rabid anti-Semite. Well, let him answer, Ibrahim. Yeah. Greg, and let's keep it to Let's keep it on the up. You know he's not saying that Bill Maher is Grand Dragon. Right. He's asking you a specific question. Would you like to answer it? I fully support the right of students to protest and picket outside, but my point is that increasingly we just want people not to right. speak in the first place, and that's bad for the marketplace of ideas. And the problem is if you exclude people you don't want to hear from, you transform a marketplace of ideas into an echo chamber. But again, that's not our position. Our position is honoring and endorsing speakers it should not be, uh, or you should be able to challenge that honoring and endorsement. If they want to speak and spew hate, it's a free country. You know what, I really appreciate you both coming on, and I'll use that little TV, TV language as we like to say. Thank you both for the spirited conversation. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, the